Hello and welcome to Charity Chat, the ACNC's podcast. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the charity sector as a whole. We'll talk about the size of the sector, we'll talk about some of the organisations that make up the charity sector in Australia, and we'll even touch on some statistics on giving in Australia. My name is Matt Crichton and I work in the education team here at the ACNC and joining me to take a look at the charity sector is the Commissioner of the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission, Susan Pascoe. Hello Susan. Hello Matt. The ACNC has provided us with a view of the sector that previously wasn't possible. Um, What do we now know about the charity sector in Australia that we previously didn't? Well, we have now an evidence base, which we didn't. There were a wide range of estimates, um, as large as 600,000 not-for-profits. And as most people will know, charities are a subset of the broader not-for-profit community. What we know from aggregating the information that charities provide us on an annual basis is that we have a sector that is a significant part of the Australian economy. It has annual income of around $135 billion. It employs over a million people, and that makes it the second largest employer in Australia after retail. Uh, It has very uh, wide diversity in the kinds of organisations that are legitimately called charities. It has nearly 3 million volunteers, which is uh, tremendous when you think of the contribution that they make to the Australian community. And we also know from the addresses of these charities that they are spread right across the vast Australian landscape, roughly in proportion to population. Right. So it is it is surprisingly big and bigger than many people in the community would, would have expected. You mentioned that there was um, a figure of 600,000, roughly, 600,000 yeah. not-for-profits and charities being just a subset of not-for-profits. Approximately, what's the number of charities that the ACNC has registered? So what we do know um, about the number of charities in Australia is that uh, the ACNC has on its register 54,500 charities, roughly. It it goes up and down a few every day. Um, We know that there was an estimate put out over a decade ago that there were 600,000 not-for-profits, and that's still just that, an estimate. The only um, credible piece of evidence that we have on the number of not-for-profits is a piece that was put out by Treasury, the Commonwealth Treasury, when they did the scoping study for a national regulator. And they found that across Australia, there were 138,000 not-for-profit entities, of which, at the time, 56,000 were charities. So that gives you a sense of the charitable form as distinct to the not-for-profit form. Right, right. Quite a large number of not-for-profits then. And of of the ones that are registered as charities with the ACNC, I think there would be a surprise in the the public consciousness about the types of organisations that it includes. Can you give us a sense of what sort of organisations make up this 54,500 registered? Look, by far the biggest group Uh, religious organisations and they've been um, operating in Australia since white settlement and making a very significant contribution to the Australian community. The next biggest group uh, are education and research organisations and then welfare bodies following Um, and all of them make a tremendous contribution to the Australian community. I think in the minds of most people, the conception of charity is welfare. uh, And they might be surprised that human rights organisations, environmental organisations, universities, these are all charities. Uh, And so when when you want to get a sense of the breadth of uh, activities that can be designated charitable activities, uh, you can look to the Charities Act which actually has 12 different um, subtypes of charity in it. Right, so if you took a walk down the main street of any town across the country, you're likely to walk past a few organisations that are registered charities that you wouldn't ordinarily think of as charities. You are. So you might think that the few churches that there are in the town are charities, but you might be surprised perhaps at the Country Women's Association, uh, the SES, the Emergency Services, uh, in most jurisdictions are charitable. In most but not all jurisdictions, the um, the fire services okay, are charitable yeah. as well. So um, that's before you get to any non-government school uh, or any of uh, the broad range of other activities that are deemed charitable activities. All right, so you can see how it does uh, build up quite a slice of the pie as far as employment, volunteering and economy goes. 
Definitely, and you can also get a sense of how important it is to civil society because it would be very difficult for these communities to run effectively if there wasn't that amount of input both from paid and volunteer um, members of the community. You did mention the economic significance briefly at the beginning was um, over a hundred billion, 134 and a half billion, and in comparison to other sectors, that's quite a significant number, isn't it? It is. Look, it's bigger than agriculture, fishing, mining, uh, a number of very significant subsectors of the Australian economy. And that's another thing that I think many people um, may have a misconception about with the concept of charity is that many of these organisations are professionally run organisations that require staff and employees and trained staff and professionals to, to affect the um, outcomes that they that they desire. I think that's true. If, for example, if you think about um, a not-for-profit aged care facility, and of course there are commercial and not-for-profit aged care facilities, it's in many ways difficult to distinguish the two sometimes. Uh, and typically what is said by the those who run the not-for-profit organisations uh, is that they can be sting distinguished by their primary purpose, which is a mission. Right. For obviously and properly for a commercial organisation, their primary purpose is profit. Right. But uh, for a not for profit um, aged care facility, it will be a, a mission of the organisation. It, it might well be a religious mission, it could be a philosophical mission, and it could, of course, be a community mission. Some small towns um, get together and they create. Uh, an aged care facility so that members of their community can be cared for um, with family and friends nearby and that's a quite a legitimate um, charitable purpose for them to do so. So that might give you a sense of some of the differences and we could look at hospitals, um, we could look at some of the education providers where you have both commercial and, and largely not-for-profit uh, but there are various other examples uh, but it's, it's having a, um, a mission uh, that is aligned to a charitable purpose that sets aside the, the charitable activities. Right, right. Which really says nothing about the way an organisation must be run. It would still be a professionally uh, a professionally run organisation, even if it's mission-based as opposed to profit. -driven. Absolutely. So all organisations of that sort, whether they be hospitals, aged care providers, education providers or whatever, they must meet um, basic accreditation requirements, uh, occupational and health requirements, um, workplace uh, requirements in terms of in industrial laws, uh, all of those must be met. And I would like to add to that that the, the boards of not-for-profit organisations are also professionally run. And in the same way as there are a large number of member-based bodies that are working to ensure that commercial and other organisations are properly governed, um, the ACNC and other bodies works to ensure good governance in not-for-profit boards as well. Yep. So I don't think that we can try and distinguish between um, a, say, a commercial board being professional and a not-for-profit board right, right, being yep. not. I would argue strongly um, that it is the intent and the practice that both operate um, on a professional footing. Right. And thinking about some of the smaller organisations that are registered as charities, of course, they can't all be... Um, the, the big famous ones such as Oxfam and World Vision, um, the 54,000 registered charities is made up of quite a number of small charities, mm. isn't that right? Yeah, it is. In fact, almost a third uh, it's, uh, have annual income under 50,000 per annum, so they're really micro entities. Right. And roughly two thirds are small, that is, they've got income under 250,000. So we are talking about, a, similar to the business community, a sizable tail that are small. And this covers the same diversity as far as activities and purposes go at the, at the tiny scale as well. It does. So you may find more, um, say, animal shelters and you might find more community-based organisations at the smaller end of the scale, whereas you're more likely to find large enterprises such as hospitals, universities, aged care facilities at the, the large end of the scale. And again, this is not dissimilar to the commercial sector where you've got your ASX listed companies and the very large um, enterprises and at the other end of the scale, you know, you've got Sammy's Pizza right, and yep. <laughs> the, the, the very small enterprises. And what do we know about giving in Australia? Um, there has been some research about the nature of Australian donations to charity. What does the ACNC know about the way Australians donate to charity? 
Look, the uh, Australian uh, community is marked by very high levels of generosity. We are known to be particularly responsive in times of natural disaster, whether it be within Australia or within our region, and we give very generously at those times. Um, according to the latest World Giving Index, we are the third most charitable country in the world, which is, is not a bad achievement. Of course, we are a, a wealthy country yeah. in, in relative terms. Uh, we gave $11.2 in 2015 to charity, uh, which is about a 2.5% rise um, on the year before. And as I mentioned earlier, additionally about 3 million Australians are volunteering um, each year and giving of your time uh, can be uh, just as valuable a contribution as giving uh, of your finances. Yeah. So there's tremendous amount right. um, being given to the Australian community. And I think that's a really good point. It's not only just reaching into the wallet to, to make a donation. The donations of time and, and knowledge and expertise are really important yeah, as well. They are. And yeah. just finally, where has the data come from? Where, do, where does the ACNC get the information that it does about the charity sector and, and how does it um, process that data and, and look into it? Well, hopefully the charities will be pleased to know that the data comes from the information that you give us either at the point of registration or when you are required to provide an annual information statement to us. So the information uh, on the annual information statement immediately populates the register and updates it so that uh, donors um, and grant makers have got ready access to accurate and up-to-date information. But in addition, at the end of the reporting period, we provide that aggregate data to the University of New South Wales. They compile it into a census on the sector and produce a report every 12 months that gives us definitive data on charities in Australia. This is the first time we've had this information and hopefully the charities themselves can see that their information is being used in multiple ways, which is beneficial. Um, but also that the Australian community can see that they have now freely available, accurate and up-to-date information on charities to inform um, their giving, whether it be volunteering or financial giving. And people can have a look at that report on the website that's set up for it, australiancharities.acnc.gov.au, and they can also play around with the data on that website. Can't they, they can, and uh, look, th there's two ways that you can use the ACNC data set if you uh, are interested. One is go to data.gov.au, and the, the data set is there, available for you um, on open access. But the other thing that you can do is go to the micro site, australiancharities.acnc.gov.au, and have a look at the information that's there. You can put in filters and then draw down the information that you're interested in. You might only be interested in charities in the Northern Territory, for example, and you might be interested in animal welfare charities. If you put in those filters, that information will come, it will drop down for you. You might only be interested in the medium sized ones. You can put that um, filter in as well. So there's many ways that you can. Um, get in and use that information to help with your own planning and your charity, but also, as some charities have done, to help in your negotiation with government. Plenty to play around with and plenty to learn about the charity sector. I think that's just about all the time we've got today, for today. Um, Susan, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it, giving us a great insight into the charity sector in Australia, and I think you've um, surprised many listeners. Thank you. Be sure to check out other episodes of ACNC Charity Chat and other resources including guides, fact sheets and webinars on our website at acnc.gov.au. And if you enjoyed this podcast and would like to hear more, subscribe on iTunes or wherever you happen to access it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.